Last lesson, we started taking a look at binary heaps. Now, I cut off the lesson kind of abruptly towards the end, but no worries because today, we are going to pick up where we left off. You're watching episode 6 of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus, Heap Sort. Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. Last time, we took a look at a binary heap and what properties are associated with it. We then took a look at insertion and how we can use sift up to actually get things in its correct position. Today, we're going to move on and in fact, we're going to place emphasis on doing things to the binary heap that help us in sorting. Now, you remember one thing I actually mentioned in passing in the previous episode? In a min heap, the smallest item is at the top. In a max heap, the largest item is at the top. What this means is, if I were to remove the topmost item again and again until the heap is empty, wouldn't I get a sorted list? Well, that in a nutshell is how heap sort works. Of course, it's not quite as easy as it sounds because you don't want to just take away the root of a tree because that breaks the tree into two disconnected trees. And of course, you don't want that to happen. So then, we have to do something after an extract max or an extract min operation to actually create a heap without actually breaking it into two different pieces. Once again, we are only going to look at the min heap, but the same idea extends to the max heap as well. So here's the deal. Let's say I have a heap that looks like this. I perform one extract min operation on it, taking away its root. So the first question to ask ourselves is, who is the best candidate to actually replace the root? Well, you could go through the tree from top to bottom to find the correct item, but then you break the complete tree property. So let's not do that. Instead, we're going to take the last item within the heap and just replace that at the root. Yes, I know what you're thinking. The heap property is broken. I know that. We're going to fix that in a moment. But what's the most important right now is that this is still a complete binary tree. So I guess this is a nice little thing to help you remember how heaps work. For every single thing we do, our topmost priority is to keep the complete tree property there. Only after we are sure of that do we move on to actually keep the heap property in place. So back to our example, our heap now looks like this. Now we have a pretty large value at the root of the tree and we want to get it out of there into its proper position. To do that, we make use of an operation called sift down. So we've looked at sift up last time when item moves up. Now, we're going to do the exact opposite, and that is to sift it downwards. Now, remember that sift up is a very simple operation. Every node simply needs to look at its parent and perform a comparison with that. Sifting down is a little bit harder, because now you have to compare yourself against two different elements, that of course being the left and the right children. The logic goes something like this. First, check to see if the node is a leaf node. Since a leaf node has no children, it doesn't violate the heap property, and so the sift down operation does nothing. If there is at least one child, we have to then move on to see if the heap property is violated. To do this, you'll have to compare the value of the current node with its children. If its value is smaller than both its children, the heap property isn't violated, and no more sift down operations are required. However, if the heap property is violated, then you have to decide which direction in which you want to move down. So you check against the two children. Now, since we're talking about a min heap here, we're going to have to choose the smaller of the two values. Then we simply swap the node with its smaller child. Now, why not the larger? You see, if you pick the larger like this and you move down, what happens is the heap property is still violated with the other child you didn't move against. So you're going to have to pick the smaller of the two items so that when you look at these three items again, you have the min heap property in place. Of course, if we are dealing with a max heap, you're going to have to choose the larger of the two children, because of course, it is a sort of mirror image of the min heap. So you've moved one step down. The idea now from this point is very similar to sift up. You want to keep doing this until you get to a point where, well, you just don't violate the property anymore. So what this means is once you sift downwards to a position where you realize that, hey, the two child nodes are both larger, that means you're done. That is the correct position for the item to be. Notice that what you've done is you've essentially moved the next smallest item all the way to the top of the tree. What this then means is you're ready to do another extract min, 
which will then get you the next item. So what this means is basically the entire heap sort process is just you creating a heap, doing extract min again and again and again until the heap is empty. So with regard to how we do things, basically that's it. That is how you perform heap sort. Now, so that you don't feel cheated, let us actually go ahead and trace the entire heap sort process. So what I'm doing right now is I'm simply constructing a heap. The method I'm using here is the naive straightforward method, and that is to start off with nothing and to just create my heap by inserting every item from my unsorted list. As you can see, at some points of time, I may have to perform certain sift up operations. The objective, of course, is to maintain the heap property. So now that we have a heap ready, what we're going to do is we're just simply going to do extract min as many times as required to get, well, a sorted list. We start off by extracting one and then shifting the lowest element all the way up. A sift down operation is required to get the binary heap property back. Well, rinse and repeat. What I'm doing here is exactly the same thing, getting rid of the topmost item, bringing the bottommost item up, and performing however many sift down operations I need. As you can see, the tree is starting to thin out. We actually have to continue this painstaking process until the entire heap is completely empty. We perform one last iteration of extract min, and that's it. We've emptied the heap, and we've got a sorted list. So let us now take a look at, you know, whether the heap sort is quick or slow. As always, in order to do that, we're going to have to take a look at everything that happens during the heap sort process, decide on how long they take, and then put it all together to get a final time complexity. So let's say now we want to sort a list of n items. The first thing we're going to need to do is to build a heap. Once we're done with that, we're going to do extract min n times. In a nutshell, that's it. So let us now take a look at how long each process takes. So how long does it take to build a heap? Well, the time required to do this is actually n log n. Why is that so? Let's say we start with nothing, and then, well, we have our original unsorted list, and we just insert these items into the heap. So of course, this process will involve, well, we start with nothing first, and then every new item that gets added, we have to do a certain number of sift ups, and we have to do that again and again for every single item. Of course, a single run of sift up will take log n time. Multiply that by an insertion of n items. Well, there you have it. That is your n log n. Very quickly, here's why sift up requires log n time. When you have a node in this position and you want to sift it up to its correct place, that is basically traversing a single branch within the tree. Since this is a complete tree, this is really no different from inserting an item into a balanced binary search tree. And that is why it is faster than n, because you're just looking at such a small number out of n nodes. Now, is this the best we can do? Well, as it turns out, the answer is no. There is actually a way to make us build a heap in even less time. However, for the sake of, well, time, we're going to actually have to skip that. This will not actually hurt the time complexity of heap sort, because the bottleneck doesn't happen at the heap building process. And that is why, unfortunately, we'll have to skip this optimization, Perhaps sometime in the future, I'll cover this. So now let's take a look at how long we need to do one call of extract min. When we do extract min, well, taking out the item is immediate, it's just one step. But after we're done with that, we have to swap an item up and start doing sift down. So really, the bottleneck for extract min actually happens during the sift down process. How long does sift down take? Well, you actually know the answer by now. Once again, we are traversing just one branch. As a result, sift down requires log n time. What this means is extract min requires log n time. To fully sort a list using a heap, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do extract min n times. As a result, the time complexity of that is n log n. So let us take a look at how many comparisons we make in total. Basically, we're doing n log n plus n log n equals 2 n log n comparisons. Using a big O notation, we drop the coefficient, and as a result, heap sort is O n log n. And basically, that is it. That's all there is for this episode of Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. We've taken a look at heaps, how to actually manipulate things within a heap. That is, of course, insertion and extract min. Everything I discussed with you was in the context of a min heap. 
but really all you have to do is to turn the less than inequalities into greater than inequalities and the algorithms become max heap algorithms. So hopefully you'll be fine just extrapolating that content from what I've shared with you so far. This is a last minute change, but I've decided to do one more episode on heaps just to tie up the loose ends. So well, stay tuned for that this coming Tuesday. But once again, that is all. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612tv. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612tv.